Hi guys, this is Dustin, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about how to get started writing Nim and using Raylib to make games. So first, uh, just a little bit of an introduction to what Nim and Raylib is. First off, Nim is a statically typed compiled systems programming language. Um, it combines a lot of really interesting ideas and features from functional programming to object-oriented programming even. The language also has uh, zero overhead iterators, compile time evaluation, uh, state-of-the-art macros. Um, the macro system uh, is especially exciting to me because it means that we can generate just a lot of the data, you know, do a lot of introspection on our objects and stuff, while also being in this really statically typed, really strong typed uh, system. NIM by default is garbage collected, but you can also turn that completely off and do all your ma uh, manual memory management that you want. There's this new really uh, interesting reference counter called ORC. Um, and uh, it uh, sounds like that's the, the way that NIM is pushing uh, for the future, and it will actually switch to uh, ARC and ORC uh, by default in the future. So uh, you get really excellent performance. Uh, it compiles down to C, it compiles down to Objective-C, C++, or JavaScript, meaning any of those languages, uh, chances are you're going to find a nice binding for it. And that brings me to Raylib. So if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I'm a big fan of Raylib. Uh, I've been a big fan for a very long time. Uh, and I think it's an excellent library to get started with if you're trying to learn how to program. So the story with Raylib and NIM bindings um, in the past has been kind of chaotic. Uh, there's been a lot of different uh, libraries. I've used a bunch of different libraries um, or a bunch of different uh, bindings. But I think uh, there's just one choice that's starting to become the most popular and the one that I think uh, I, that I recommend. Uh, using and that is uh, NIM Raylib now ex with an exclamation mark and you can uh, find the, the link in the description below. But yeah, it has uh, pretty complete bindings uh, for uh, Raylib, Raymath, Ray, uh, RLGL, you know the Raylib uh, OpenGL bindings, uh, Ray GUI, um, Fizak. Uh, so you can uh, use all of those in your in your game very easily uh, using NIM. Okay, so now I just want to demo what I've built using uh, Raylib and NIM so far. Um, it's nothing too crazy. Uh, it's way early in development. Um, I just want to preface this by saying I'm still learning NIM. Uh, NIM's, uh, I, even though I've been following it for a long time, you know, I, I, I use other languages for work and, and stuff like that, and uh, I've been recently getting back into it. So yeah, let me, uh, this is the project that I've been working on using it. Uh, this uses uh, Ray GUI. It uses basically all the Raylib libraries, um, RayMath and all that. Uh, so this is the kind of you know GUIs that you could build. Um, you might have to do your own, like, um, some other you know, uh, layout stuff yourself, but um, overall, you know, Raylib's just a really excellent library You're just for getting up and going. And, uh, it really gets out of your way. It allows you to write your own shaders, like this uh, custom shader that um, you know, renders the world in this really low resolution, stuff like that. So yeah. Okay, so now I want to show you just a little bit of how the, uh, the code looks like. Um, basically, you can write your Raylib code uh, just like you would in C++. Um, the only thing that uh, you have to watch out for is this is a uh, library that binds to C functions. So what you have to end up doing is casting a lot of your types from like you know the standard nim float to a C float or a standard nim string to a C uh, string. And so that uh, part um, has proven to be just a little bit challenging, just trying to adapt some of um, some of the things that I knew in C++ over to nim. Um, being that I'm still learning NIM, I'm still pretty new uh, with NIM, that uh, might also be a challenge for you uh, for you guys. So I would make sure that you're uh, very comfortable with just, you know, looking at other people's source code. You know, really, you really have to, you know, dig in and uh, um, also the, the Discord community, I'm sure, will uh, be happy to help you. The Discord community for NIM um, and also probably Raylib. There is a uh, channel uh, dedicated for NIM. Um, but yeah, uh, one thing I'd probably recommend is just I'd probably write some uh, wrappers around uh, some of the more commonly called functions just to make this so you don't have to convert every single time a little bit a little bit easier and stuff like that. So along with Raylib, you may need to use some other libraries to help you out with your game. You know, libraries for like serialization, deserialization, and maybe even uh, entities and stuff like that. So the first library I want to show you is this uh, serialization deserialization library called Frosty, and this was really cool. And this really shows off some of the really cool features of NIM. Um, so yeah, basically what you can do is you can just give it an object and then it will write a, uh, it will create a uh, binary blob of that object and then you can read that back in and convert it back to your original object. Um, and this is really cool, like I, I originally used this for the game I just showed off uh, and uh, I had the entire state of the world in just a single object and then I just wrote it, uh, you know, wrote to a file and it just worked uh, out of the box and then I read it back in and it just, yeah, it just worked. So this library is very cool. Um, of course, you know, binary data isn't uh, super helpful, especially if you need to like 
uh, change your types and stuff like that while developing. So um, I eventually switched over to using a library called json -E. So that's JSON with a Y at the end. Um, and this library is really interesting also uh, because it uses this cool uh, hook system. So when I was generating uh, JSON before, um, I was creating uh, such big JSON files that my editor couldn't even open it. Um, and so uh, using uh, this hook system, I was able to control kind of like what the output of the JSON looks like for you know in each given type. And that helped reduce the, the size of the JSON file uh, by like almost 50%. Um, so this library is very cool, I recommend it. Now on the entity side of things, uh, there's not as many libraries that I've found, but one that I think uh, is probably the best is this library called Polymorph. Um, it's pretty cool. It definitely uses a lot of the cool uh, features of NIM, like macros and templates and stuff. Um, and this one looks uh, really great to, to use. So I would I recommend using this one over probably the other uh, libraries out there. And then uh, finally, uh, if you don't want to use any libraries at all, uh, NIM has built in a really nice JSON parser and uh, writer, writer and all that. Um, so you can serialize to, uh, JSON uh, just using NIM, which is pretty cool, the standard library. Um, also, if you don't like JSON, you could also use uh, XML. XML is baked into NIM, NIM standard library also. Um, this is really cool because uh, that means you can, you know, if you're working with tiled maps, you know, they, it, it, uh, its formats in XML, you can parse it just using straight, uh, straight NIM from the standard library. Okay, so now I'm just going to show how uh, to get started uh, making a project, a very basic uh, Raylib NIM project. I, I wanted to show how to do this also on Windows, but I currently am not able to do that. Uh, so if you guys are interested in a video going over um, how to actually get this going on Windows, uh, let me know. Um, I don't think it's any uh, too much different. Um, I haven't played around with it, but I don't think it should. there should be any very many differences. Um, you might have to install the Raylib library, install some DLLs, but um, that, that should be about it. So most of the steps that you see right now should be the same on uh, whatever platform that you're, you're working on. Okay, so let me create a new directory. I'm just gonna call this my new NIM Raylib project, something like that. Uh, I'm gonna CD into that directory. And now I'm gonna run Nimble in it. Um, I'm gonna make this a binary and I'm just gonna leave the rest uh, default. You guys can change it uh, if you'd like. And what that's done is, whoop, what that's done is created us a uh, nimble file, which is, you can think of it as kind of like the, the project file that defines, you know, the dependencies that you rely on and stuff like that. And then the source folder. So let me open this up in code. Oh. And let me go into this nimble, uh, nimble file. So I want to use nimraylib. So let's uh, do that. I'm gonna write nim raylib now. You might want to specify a specify a version here. Just to make sure that you know if you if you install later down the road, you know a new version of raylib isn't gonna break the project. But um, things seem pretty stable, and uh, I'll leave that up to you guys. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm just gonna run nimble build. And what this should nim and what this should do is uh, pull in the nim raylib project and all that. Uh, it looks like uh, since I'm, you know, I already have it installed by machine because of the other project, uh, it just uh, pulled it in instantly. Okay, so let's go over to the uh, the main nim file, which is in our uh, source directory, and I'm gonna write just some basic nim uh, raylib. So I'm gonna say init window. Oh, actually, let's uh, import the library. So I'm gonna go import nim raylib now. Um, and you can import uh, each module individually if you like, or just impo import the entire library. I'm going to do init window, something like this, and it's going to take a width, so I'm going to do 1280, and I have to cast this to a C integer since this is a C library. I'm going to do the same thing for the, uh, the height, and then also the title. I'm just going to just do hello world, like this. Um, and then I'm going to go, uh, actually, you know what, I think this should automatically convert since these are literals, so we should be fine there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do while uh, window should close, while not window should close, and then I'm going to go begin drawing, I'm going to go end drawing, and let's just draw a nice rectangle. Uh, actually I can't do that, let's do draw a rectangle. I'm going to put it at uh, 100, 100, and I'm going to make it 200 by like 300, and let's just color it red. Now let's run nimble run. And we should see a new uh, window pop up. Uh, since it's building for the first time, it might be a little bit slow. All right, there it is. 
So that's been my introduction to Raylib and Nim using them together. I won't say that's just going to be a smooth, you know, experience. Uh, Nim is a very new language. You know, there's there's some bugs in it, so you might run into some, you know, difficulties. Uh, but you know, with all new projects, you know, to really get uh, it solid and stuff, you need a user base, right? So I uh, wanted to put this video out there to hopefully get get more people to uh, look into Nim, look into Raylib, and start using them together. But yeah. I hope you guys have an excellent day, and I'll see you later.